talking about Canada, you know, Amber, I see with the Canadian government, with their budget coming up in April, there's lots of discussions out there that uh, they're going to go to a percentage tax instead of a flat tax. If that happened and went to a percentage, it's probably worth 70, 80 million dollars in less taxes that Tilray would have to pay. Now, that 70, million, 70, 80 million dollars is something that we would continue to invest in marketing and social media and educate the consumers of the benefits of cannabis. And I think that's what's important. Our, our biggest cost today within Tilray in Canada, and we're close to a $300 million cannabis business in Canada, is our taxation. As I said before, if we sell $300 million, we're paying about $150 million towards excise tax in Canada. Bring in Erwin Simon, Chair and CEO of Tilray Brands, for some perspective. Erwin, thanks as always for joining me. I mean, the trading action last week really shows you that uh, you know the U.S. is still very much a driver or potential catalyst for these stocks. You're running a whole business, though, uh, and you've been talking to us about what Europe means. You're joining us from Europe now. Uh, help us understand the Europe opportunity for a company like Tilray. So good afternoon, Amber. And listen, the European opportunity for Tilray is tremendous. And, uh, you know, Europe is a country with over 600 million people. Um, today, we sell medical cannabis in 16 different countries. And what's happening in Germany is going to be a major change for Tilray. We think at least you know doubles over the next couple of years our business over there, or triples our business. And one of the big things for our shareholders today, I don't believe we get any value for our European business. We have operations in Portugal, a major growth facility, a major growth facility in Germany, and what just recently happened in Germany, and come April first, where the federal government in Germany has approved it, and now it goes to local which it's been decriminalized and no longer a narcotic. And I think Germany is a gateway for the rest of Europe. When you say the market's not giving you any value um, for your business there, what do investors need to understand? Uh, you know, is the Canadian market, can you just uh, export the experience you're having in Canada and import it there? You know, there's been a lot of competition. There's been pricing pressures. Are the dynamics different? Are they better in markets like Germany and elsewhere? So, number one, margins are much higher in, in Europe than they are in the Canadian market, which is important. Number two is, listen, Canada is the only country in the world where recreational cannabis is, is legal. But unfortunately, Canada's got, you know, 32, 35 million people. As I said before, Europe got 600 million people. In the countries that we sell medical cannabis, which is the only cannabis that's legal today, is you know a much smaller you know demographics are a much smaller market but i come back and i say this here you know take the 300 million people and allow doctors in every one of those countries to be able to write prescriptions and what you said before is tilray has a major grow facility in portugal a major grow facility you know in germany yes we can export to you know europe under gnp certification but we're the one of the only cannabis companies today that is set up to be able to sell medical cannabis in Europe. And I think the big thing is the benefits of medical cannabis in regards to sleep, for anxiety, for pain, for epilepsy, for cancer is tremendous. And that's one of the things we're looking at. You know, do we partner with certain medical companies and stuff like that? So I'm, I gotta tell you, I've spent lots of time in Europe lately. I'm, you know, with our European strategic team and putting together a strategic plan. And, you know, over the next two to three years, we're seeing some great opportunities in the European market. And with that, you know, Amber, we also have a great spirits and beer business in the U.S. market. How do we enter the European market within the spirits and beer opportunity? And we see lots of good things to happen there, too. Would you consider listing um, in, in Europe? 
Yeah, great, great question. And I continuously look, how do I get value for my shareholders? Okay. And do we, you know, ultimately as we, you know, as I said before, double and triple and the profits come from there. Uh, ultimately, should we be listed on the, the London or the AIM or, you know, the Amsterdam or something like that is something absolutely we should look at. Would you give up a listing to do that? The Canadian <laughs> one? Would I give up a listen? Listen, I would not give up a Canadian. Listen, we started in Canada. Canada is very important to us, and uh, we have a great business in Canada, and we would not give up a listing. But, you know, multiple companies today, as they diversify their business and grow, look at multiple listings. And, you know, just talking about Canada, you know, Amber, I see with the Canadian government, with their budget coming up in April, there's lots of discussions out there that uh, they're going to go to a percentage tax instead of a flat tax. And right now, you know, we pay well over $150 million. And I don't know if you recently seen, there's more excise tax today coming from cannabis in Canada than there is coming from, you know, beer and spirits. Mm. So ultimately, the Canadian government got to do something on excise tax. And what you're seeing is over the last five years, the amount of consumers that have moved away from alcohol and have moved into cannabis. And that's still, with the cannabis market in Canada only running about 60% today, the other 40% still within, you know, an illicit market. So I see tremendous, tremendous opportunity for cannabis in the Canadian market. So it's interesting about um, the, the possible tax changes that could come as part uh, of the budget. Would that be a significant windfall to a company like Tilray, create a bit more financial flexibility? Listen, if that happened and went to a percentage, it's probably worth 70, 80 million dollars in less taxes that Tilray would have to pay. Now, that 70, million, 70 80 million dollars is something that we would continue to invest in marketing and social media and educate the consumers of the benefits of cannabis. And I think that's what's important. And I'm sure the provinces will be looking for some of that, but it's something that ultimately is going to drop to the bottom line. Our, our biggest cost today within Tilray in Canada, and we're close to a $300 million cannabis business in Canada, is our taxation. As I said before, if we sell $300 million, we're paying about $150 million towards excise tax in Canada. So you know there's a lot of money going towards taxes there.